Now we've talked about the rough and smooth ER and some of the roles they play. And I mentioned that they ship their contents uh, often, oops, often to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is another organelle that consists of a bunch of membrane. All of the organelles we've been talking about so far, the endomembrane system, are composed of phospholipid membranes just like the plasma membrane of the cell. Um, so here is a Golgi apparatus. It consists of a bunch of somewhat flattened sacs kind of stuck together like this, each one made of membrane. And <clears throat> transport vesicles emerge from the Golgi full of proteins and lipids and other things that it made, um, perhaps some carbohydrates, and they make their way to the Golgi. Now there are two sides to these flattened sacs. The side that receives items is called the cis face, and the side where they ship out is called the trans face, as you can see down here, the shipping side. And uh, the important thing to note here is that transport vesicles are received here, and they have things inside of them, proteins or carbohydrates, things like that. And those carbohydrates and proteins and things might be modified as they proceed through the Golgi apparatus. So the Golgi apparatus is kind of like UPS. It's a shipping center, but it also can modify things. And then the finished product bubbles off in a transport vesicle and leaves the Golgi apparatus. And it might go off uh, to a number of places. I also want to mention that, let me draw a transport vesicle. The transport vesicles contain things, some of the things produced by uh, the uh, ER, for example, and some of the items might actually be embedded in the membrane and cross that membrane, like uh, transmembrane proteins, these, these integral proteins that cross the membrane, like we saw in that picture of the cell membrane before. Because the transport vesicle, once again, this red circle right here, is if lipid bilayer, a piece of membrane in a bubble, okay? And there are proteins and things stuck in it. So these are produced by the ER, they go to the Golgi, and then the Golgi might edit them, change them around a bit, switch some parts around, and then they bubble back off again. Um, I, I also want to mention that they, the, the names of these flattened discs are called cisternae. You might see that word, cisternae. Um, not common in Arkansas, but where I grew up, people would collect well uh, rainwater in a in a tank called a cistern. A cistern, a cistern is a room that that holds water, and that's what these are named after. Okay. One of the kinds of structures that produced in these processes is known as a lysosome. A lysosome looks like a transport vesicle, but it contains hydrolytic enzymes. Um, this is essentially, usually it contains acids. <laughs> uh, they, they break bonds. Uh, they digest things. They are digestive structures. Lyse means to break or, or, or digest. Like Lysol, the spray, it breaks cell membranes of bacteria. Lysosomes are produced uh, by the cell. They have proteins inside made by the, gold, I mean, made by the uh, rough ER. And um, they fuse, because remember, cell membranes, that outer, level, that outer layer, that lipid membrane, is like a soap bubble. So if you take one and push it against another, they fuse together. The same thing with the organelles in your cell. When you take a lysosome, here's a, what do we have here? We have a mitochondrion. Here's a, a lysosome that fuses with a mitochondrion and, and goes bloop, and it kind of combines with it, and then it digests it. It breaks it down. Hydrolytic enzymes digest the organelle components. This thing um, is involved in recycling, breaking down old organelles. It can be used to break down back, uh, and eat bacteria in white blood cells. So defense in that case. And lysosomes can be used for self-destruction. Sometimes cells self-destruct. So that's what peroxisomes, I mean not peroxisomes, lysosomes can be used for. 
and they are basically once again a transport vesicle, a bubble, a bubble of membrane with uh, enzymes inside that digest things. Have a look at this. This is kind of showing you the connection between some of these organelles. So remember, um, proteins are made using information from the DNA in here, right? Um, this structure here, the nucleolus that we've seen before, it it is a structure we haven't really mentioned. I should have mentioned it before, but it it produces ribosomes. And then in here is uh, a chromatin, that's DNA, <clears throat> and protein, and that's where messenger RNA is made. It comes out here, and then it's going to be read by <clears throat> a uh, ribosome. Um, and then here we have a transport vesicle that has been made uh, in the Golgi. Here it bubbled off what looks like uh, part of the, maybe the smoothie ER is kind of hard to tell there, it bubbles off, fuses with the, uh, fuses, um, or leaves the ER, fuses with the Golgi, is modified, and it bubbles back out, and that might become a lysosome now, that it's been fully functional. Also, this transport, uh, one of these transport vesicles might fuse with the plasma membrane, the outer membrane of the cell, and it might actually become part of that plasma membrane. So before I talked about how one of these transport vesicles might have a protein stuck in it like this. If this this transport vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane, then that, that protein right there will become part of the plasma membrane and it will be stuck in the plasma membrane. So this is how we uh, grow organelles with more membrane and things, is these transport vesicles and their contents. Also, the contents of one of these vesicles can be ejected to the outside world and used as a signal to signal other cells. Um, there's a lot going on here. It's, it's a pretty impressive process. So have a look at this diagram, uh, read it over, and uh, see how these things are all interconnected. In the next video that I put together, um, I'm going to talk about, for one thing, endosymbiosis and the origin of mitochondria and chloroplasts. Uh, they are not considered part of the endomembrane system necessarily because they divide on their own. They're a little bit weird, and we'll talk about those next.